right, good morning. Good morning. I was just told not to sing, so I won't sing. Um, good for you. We're going to continue our studies in Genesis. Um, today it's going to be Genesis chapter 18, so let's turn to Genesis 18. And I will read the uh, it's okay, got this whole chapter. It's locked up. Genesis chapter 18. It's amazing how... Uh, our kids learn things that we do. When I was first married, there was a spider in my bedroom, and I took Bethany's hairspray and sprayed it. And thought I killed it, but it fell behind the bed. So I don't think I could sleep all night. It kind of freaked me out. So this morning, I thought somebody passed out in the house. I heard all this commotion. Sound like somebody fell. Everybody's uh, screaming and hollering. And come to find out. Uh, Hannah and Hattie were trying to show the spiders. <laughs> it disappeared, so they couldn't find it. So we may have to do that again tonight when, uh, when we get home. Have to find that spider. So uh, Genesis chapter 18. We're going to learn about the divine appearance. <coughs> the divine appearance. So let's go to Lord in prayer for us. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone that's here. Pray for all the classes going on right now. Just let it be your word that's taught, Lord. And just uh, speak through me, speak through the teachers, just speak, speak to each heart that's here, Lord. And just help us be obedient to you and draw close to you. And we pray for those that have been saved and work on more hearts to come to the next services. And we pray for anybody that's unsaved here that they come to know your Savior. Again, just use me to let be your word. In Jesus Christ's name I ask for thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Genesis 18. And the Lord appeared unto him in the flames of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet. And rest yourself under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk in the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. <clears throat> and they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, 
which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? For adventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, to be far from that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. For adventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for the lack of five? And he said, If I find the forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, For adventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O Lord, let not the Lord be angry. Or he said, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. For adventure there shall be thirty. For adventure there shall thirty be found. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, for adventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, I will speak yet but this once. For adventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. So in chapter 17, the Lord appeared unto Abraham after 13 years, revealing to him that he, at the age of 100, and Sarah at the age of 90, would have a son whose name would be Isaac. Abraham laughed, and so would we. The covenant promise of a seed, and the seed would was sealed by instituting the act of circumcision, which, which Austin spoke on last week. The previous chapter ended with Abraham's obedience uh, to God's command by circumcising all the men, young and old, in his household. Anytime God's children willfully obey him, it puts them in a place of greater blessing and fellowship with God. So if you're saved, if you willfully obey God, uh, you'll, you're in a place of greater blessing and fellowship with God. First Samuel fifteen twenty two, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. And in John fourteen fifteen, it says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. So let's look at the divine appearance. The Lord is welcomed into Abraham's tent um, in, in the place of Mamre. And the Mamre means fatness or fruitfulness. Uh, Abraham was obedient to God's command in chapter 17, and now the Lord visits him. So the, what a contrast trap with uh, chapter 16. In chapter 16, Abraham's disobedience brought silence from heaven for 13 years. So him just being disobedient, he didn't hear from heaven for 13 years. So we should keep that in mind if we uh, decide not to obey God. Chapter 17 through 19, um, Abraham's obedience to God's command brings special fellowship, fruitfulness, and a visit from the Lord. So the Lord visited him. So if Christ came to your house today, would uh, he be recognized? Would you know it was him? Um, would he be welcomed? Or would you be ashamed? Abraham knew exactly who he was when he saw him. Um, notice the Lord appeared, and it is the Lord and two other men. Um, one of the three men was the Lord. Um, Abraham bowed down and worshiped. We see that in verse 2. Uh, we know that one of the three men was the pre-incarnate Christ. Uh, because he promised to do 
what only God could do. In verses 10 and 11, he, he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And he is, he is addressed as the judge of the earth in verse 25 we just read. Um, he is called the judge. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So we see that that's the pre-incarnate Christ. Um, the other two men were angels in verse 22. Uh, let's see. Uh, chapter 19, verse 1. It says there came two angels to Sodom. That's the two angels that were down there with uh, Abraham. Uh, Abraham's faith, Abraham's faith recognized the Lord, even though he was manifest as a man. And we see this in the New Testament. John recognized the Lord. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And in Luke 2, verses 28 through 30, uh, when uh, Jesus was born when he was a baby and brought to the uh, temple, Simeon was there. It said, Then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. So Simeon recognized the, the Lord when he was there, and so did John. Faith always recognizes God in everything. Faith recognizes God in sorrow. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verse 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Faith recognizes God in suffering. Romans 8, verses 16 through 18, The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And faith recognizes God in death. Psalm 116, verse 15, says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Faith desires God's presence. And we see that Abraham desired God to stay with him when he, when he was there. In verse uh, 3, and Abraham said, My Lord, if now I found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. So Abraham desired for God to stay with him for a little while. Um, faith is always is always hospitable to the Lord and his servants. So we saw that Abraham hastily tried to uh, make the men comfortable. He got them water for their feet, and he told them to rest under the tree, and he, he said he'd give them some food. Um, so he took care of them. Faith is always hospitable. Uh, communion with God, in this instance, was around a calf that was slain for a meal. Um, so we see in, in verses 9 through 15, God renews his promise with Abraham. In these verses, we have the unlimited power of God on one hand, and we have the weakness of man on the other hand, Sarah's faith, because Sarah... Um, well, let's just read verses 9 and 10. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind her. Um, and going to verse 12. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. So she laughed and doubted. Um, the promised seed would come only through resurrection power. God would give life out of the dead womb, and he also gave life out of the dead tomb when Christ rose from the dead. So Sarah laughed with unbelief. She didn't believe it because she couldn't see what God could do. She just saw what was around her because probably she never saw a woman past a certain age have a child. So... 
Um, there was a woman a long time ago who was 51 years old and was expecting a baby. When my wife and I were expecting our first baby, we went to a Lamaze class and there was a really, really old woman there that was 51 years old that was pregnant. And that was like the oldest woman that I saw. Uh, now I'm real close to her age. So. Um, so anyway, that was the oldest woman I ever saw that was expecting a baby. And I'm sure there was older. But in Sarah's case, she didn't see it. She'd never seen this before. Um, so verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? So what seems impossible in your life? Is it even too impossible for God? So Sarah, she's thinking, what God has promised is impossible. Her unbelief is exposed and rebuked, because they, they call her out on it. Um, every child of God should hold to verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Um, Ephesians 3, verse 20 and 21 says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Um, notice what God says about Sarah's faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. It says, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So how do you judge God? Do you judge God faithful? Um, thank God that his grace covers our weaknesses and our failure to or our failure of unbelief. God, God's grace covers our weaknesses and our unbelief. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 um, and he said, that's Jesus said unto me, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So use what faith you have, believe God with what little faith you have, and, and just as he did with Sarah, he will give you strength for whatever that may be. Um, the divine announcement against Sodom and Gomorrah. In spite of the horrible judgment about to be pronounced upon these two wicked cities, a wonderful truth is revealed. Um, as a, an obedient Christian can have such a close and wonderful relationship with God that God will reveal secrets to them. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. This is also the privilege of the believer in sweet, obedient fellowship with the Lord. Psalm 25, 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Psalm 103.7 says, He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. And John 15.15, 15, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. The friend of God knows God's ways, while others only see his acts. God reveals his plan for the church, God of It is judgment. Um, he hears the cry of their wickedness. Uh, God examines their actions. Jeremiah 17, 11. I, the Lord, search the hearts. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So God heard their cry of their sin. It was so bad he had to come down and see it. Uh, when God judges, there will be no excuse or cry of injustice. Even so, will it be with any sinner in any age. So we, in verses 23 through 33, we see the importance of inter intercessory prayer. Uh, this is the first intercessory prayer in the Bible. 
and is a picture of Christ interceding for we who are in for we who are in the sinful and condemned world. Um, the judges, the judge of all, let me try that again. The judge of all the earth will do right. He will not slay the righteous with the wicked in the final days of, of judgment on earth. Uh, the righteous will be raptured before the wrath of God falls on this wicked earth. Um, we must learn to intercede for the lost so that they might be saved. We must pray for people so that they'll be saved. And if you see a Christian who's not living right, instead of talking bad about them or being down on them, we need to <coughs> pray for them. Um, unselfishly. We need to intercede for them. So let's look at um, some of the characteristics of true intercession um, as follows. In verse 23, let's see here, verse 23, there it is. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? So it's unselfish. He was unselfish there. Um, Verse 24, for adventure there be 50 righteous within the city, wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? Um, he is compassionate, unselfish and compassionate. Um, 25, verse 25, that be far from thee to do after this manner. It's, it's of faith. He had faith that God would not do this if there were a certain amount of. Um, righteous there. Um, verse 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes, it is with humility. Verse 30. And he said unto, the, unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. For adventure there shall be 30 be found there. And he said, and God said, I will not do it for 30. Um, it is earnest. 32. Um, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet but this one. It is earnest. Um, and perseverance is with perseverance. And in verse 33, And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham. It is by communion with God. So an intercessive prayer is unselfish, compassionate, it's of faith, with humility, earnest, it is with perseverance, and uh, it is by communion with God. It does not take many saved people to hold back judgment. Ten saved people in Sodom and Gomorrah could have held back the judgment. <clears throat> if Lot had won just his own family, plus his two sons-in-law and two other people, Sodom and Gomorrah could have been saved. <clears throat> Ten people would have caused God to spare the city. Lot, his wife, two unmarried daughters, and at least two married daughters and two sons-in-law, plus two other converts would have made up the ten. But only three escaped, because remember Lot's wife she turned into a pillar of salt because she looked back. Um, in 13 or 14 years, Lot did not win his own family or the other two converts needed to spare these cities from the wrath of God. God's wrath could have been held back if Lot had just been faithful as a Christian. Um, are you a faithful Christian? Let's turn to Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, verses 13 through 17. <clears throat> For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And in Mark 16, 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach 
the gospel to every creature. And if you say, I can't do that, let's go back to verse 14. <coughs> uh, chapter 18. Is anything too hard for the Lord? So we need to pray for the lost, pray for other Christians, and spread the gospel. And if you're not saved, we hope that you would come and know Jesus Christ as your Savior today. And just pray for next services, and thank you.